So now let's move on to volume measurements. Here are the rest of the measures. Thanks, Janie. Now volume measurements are used for liquid ingredients and for dry ingredients. Tools for volume measurements are your measuring cups, measuring pitchers, and measuring spoons. Keep in mind that ounce is a measure of both volume and weight. Remember that when it is written fluid ounce, it is volume. Ounce is weight. Always measure ingredients in the largest appropriate container. The fewer times an ingredient is measured, the less chance there is for, say, an error. For example, it is more accurate and faster to, say, measure one quart of milk than, say, four cups of milk. You should know some common measures of volume and their equivalents because you may not always have the exact measuring tool on hand. Oh, yes. Those are the measurements on the laminated chart that we have on the wall behind the press area. That was a really useful idea. Right, and standard measuring equipment should always be used when preparing food because it helps us measure the right amount of each ingredient. The equipment used to measure volume includes measuring spoons, dry measuring containers, and liquid measuring containers. Measuring spoons are used to measure small amounts, say less than two ounces, of ingredients, such as your seasonings, your spices, herbs, and flavorings. Although we use larger measures more often, it is important to be familiar with the smaller measures. A standard set of measuring spoons consists of one fourth teaspoon, one half teaspoon, one teaspoon, and one tablespoon. A set of nested measuring cups usually includes one fourth cup, one third cup, one half cup, and one cup. Nested cups and graduated dry measures are used to measure small amounts of dry and liquid ingredients, such as your salt, confectioner's sugar, cocoa, or syrup. Dry measuring cups do not have a lip above the fill line, so the ingredients can be leveled. They are usually made of aluminum or stainless steel. The sizes for graduated dry measures are one cup, one pint, one quart, two quarts or a half gallon, and one gallon. Rings on the graduated measure indicate one fourth, one half, and three fourths of the total volume and should be counted from the bottom to the top of the container. Graduated dry measures larger than one quart are not routinely used because it is more accurate to weigh than to measure when dealing with larger amounts of dry ingredients. We use liquid measures to measure large amounts of liquids. They have a lip for pouring to prevent spills and are made of aluminum or clear plastic. The sizes include one pint, one quart, half gallon, and one gallon. Rings on aluminum liquid measures indicate one-fourth, one-half, and three-fourths of the total volume of the container and should be counted from the bottom to the top. The clear plastic measures have the measures printed on the side. Well, in addition to using the right measuring equipment, it's important that we use the correct measuring technique. I'll show you how to measure dry ingredients first. So the first thing is to always remember to use standard measuring equipment like you see here. You want to use the largest appropriate measure to save time and reduce error. So you just basically spoon the ingredient lightly into the container and you just fill the measuring container so that it's overflowing and then level it off with a straight edge spatula. You see that? Yeah. Okay. And remember, you don't want to shake or tap the measuring container. I know that there are a few ingredients that need special attention when you measure them. You're absolutely right, especially when the scale is not available. Things such as your brown sugar and solid fats need special attention. Why don't we take a look at those now? Okay, to measure brown sugar, you want to pack it firmly into the measuring utensil until it actually holds the shape of the container. See there? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you want to also level this off at the top. See there? And then solid fat should also be pressed. 
and we've already packed this, and then we're going to level the top also of this. Now, as you can see, weighing is actually going to be a lot easier. Now, if you have to measure dry ingredients by volume, such as flour, powdered sugar, or cornstarch, stir them to eliminate packing. But again, weighing is the most accurate way to measure larger amounts of dry ingredients. So how do you measure liquids? Oh, very good question. Again, choose a standard liquid measuring container that is closest inside to the amount you need to measure. And you want to begin by placing everything on a flat surface, as we've already done here. And we want to pour the liquid into the container until it reaches the desired level. So let's say we want to have two cups of juice here. And we'll just pour that in. Now, because we're using a clear or plastic uh, measuring utensil here, we can go down to eye level just to make sure we have the right amount. OK? Perfect. That's right. And now, if we were using the metal container, we'll need to actually look inside to make sure we have the right amount. OK? Now, I have a great tip that I want to share with you. When you measure thick liquids, such as syrup, what you want to do is scrape the measuring cup with a food scraper to get it all out. You can also lightly spray the container with a vegetable oil cooking spray before measuring to prevent sticking. Oh, that's a great tip. Yeah, and it really works. It works. <laughs> you make everything look so easy.